so good morning uh, today i'm going to discuss uh, a short case which has been uh, performed and presented by one of the pediatric registrars during our morning vote round this case presentation is intended for the final year medical students so what we have done is uh, the uh, the candidate will uh, perform and present the short case but during the presentation and performance she will sometimes intentionally do some mistakes because these mistakes are done uh, in view of uh, providing us some discussion points so we can learn from those mistakes and see how we can uh, perform the short case better when it comes to the real exam situation so the topic for the discussion today is a respiratory short case and uh, this short case involves an infant and this infant has underlying hypertonia so the objective is to detect the problem with the respiratory system identify the underlying neurological disorder and try to link the two conditions so we'll see how it goes so we are going to the uh, video recording and in between the recording i will be pausing it for uh, when, when we come to a discussion point, I will pause it and have a small discussion around it. So, we will listen to her performance. Can you start the short case with the running community? Right. Uh, this baby is lying on the bed with mm. nasal to oxygen, mm -hmm. and there is a pulse oximetry, and there is a cannula on his uh, left side foot. Okay. And the baby looks, there's, there's respiratory distress. Okay, before we go to the signs of respiratory distress uh, the candidate mentioned that there is a pulse oximeter attached to the baby and she is on nasal prong oxygen uh, and, and a cannula which are good observation points but I would have been more happier if she had mentioned the pulse oximeter reading and also how much of oxygen the baby was uh, getting for example if she had presented this saying the child is on nasal prong oxygen receiving one liter per minute of oxygen and he is attached to the pulse oximeter which is reading 100% saturation with one liter of oxygen that would have been more uh, more descriptive of the child's condition okay so we will go to the movie again so if you carefully look, you will see there is not only subcostal recessions, but there are suprasternal recessions as well. Okay. And uh, I would like to... Start so the distress signs are tachypnea and recessions. recessions. I would like to start the design first. Fine. Okay. 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 This is a good thing to do, especially when the child is rest at rest and not in a crying mode. Better to do the auscultations quickly. <coughs> and uh, the candidate has auscultated all possible areas of the anterior lung field. She was careful to auscultate even the middle lobe, uh, sorry, the mid zones of the lungs as well. So that is a good thorough auscultatory examination. Okay, did you hear anything? Bilateral air entry is equal with added crepitations all over the lungs and with prolonged expirations, no air entry reduction. Are they, are they post crepitations or yes. fine crepitations? Uh, post crepitations, okay. And with that oscillation, no doubt P2 as well. Hmm. Even though child is having uh, factors, excavator mark features in the chest, otherwise I couldn't see any features suggesting of chronic lung disease. Okay. So there is a factus excavation. Right. As medical students, uh, you have to uh, you better know that uh, rather than saying there are no features of chronic lung disease, it would have been better if she had told some of the features which she expect in a child with chronic lung disease, such as clubbing. Right.
Uh, now you are checking for expansion. Expansion. Are you happy with the expansion or yes. unhappy? Happy? happy with the expansion. Okay. Right. Okay. Now uh, in percussion, I think she uh, did only three zones: the upper zone, middle zone, and the lower zone, which is enough in a little infant because sometimes if you overdo percussion it will be uh, a discomfort to the child so she correctly did the end upper uh, uh, segments of the uh, chest then the middle and the lower but remember when you are doing the percussion you have to go on a line like this starting from near the sternum and the line should go away from the sternum and to the lateral parts. So you will see that she is doing it in a correct manner. Okay. Before that, anything unusual in the general examination of the child? Why do you say hypotonic? Both extended arms and the legs, mm -hmm. frog like position. Okay, frog like position, okay. Did you observe any significant movements in the limbs? Uh, no. No, okay. Normal, uh, normal, uh, normal tone is not there, mm -hmm. position. So this is the typical uh, way a uh, hypotonic child would lie in a bed. Uh, this we call as the uh, flick, frog flick position and you can see that when she is touching the child and doing these procedures there was minimal movements in the child's limbs especially in the proximal part of the limbs. There were some movements in the distal part of the limbs but uh, no significant movements in the proximal uh, Areas of the limbs. Yep. Okay. Anything unusual in the face? What will you look for? Uh, no, any dysmorphic features. No dysmorphic features, okay. Uh, what dysmorphic feature were you looking for mainly? Uh, the inverted lip and the inverted upper lip band. And so what do you call that face? Like yeah, what do you call that face? Uh, a myopathic face. Ah, okay. So any myopathic face, face, face is not? No. Okay. Okay, so the uh, typical myopathic face, typical myopathic face will be an elongated face with a narrow forehead and, and the, the upper lip will be inverted, uh, V-shaped. And the child will have the lower jaw slightly open because he can't keep the uh, mouth closed because the jaw muscles are weak and due to gravity the uh, mouth will uh, be kept in a slightly open position. Okay. Right. Okay. What will you expect with the reflexes? Diminished reflexes or absent reflexes? Right. Okay. You said you want to check the back as well? Yes. How will you do it in this child? Uh, last yeah. I'm going to check the back as well. I'm going to check the back as well. I'm going Whenever a child is in this place, it's always better to ask the mother to hold the child. BCG scars are there. Right. BCG scars are there. And also the And also you can see that the mother is supporting the head. Because even though the baby is four months old, still the baby does not have head control. And that is again another feature of hypotonia. Absent head control, even at uh, the correct age. So because it's a small child, we will go only for the auscultation. Okay. Even here you can see the Distal movements are there, but not the proximal limb movements. They are minimal. Okay.
again auscultate the three main songs upper middle and lower i can appreciate my intercostal fixation and sensation okay yeah mm -hmm. with the lap with the auscultation it is same as previous and i feel equal with the post preparation and from expiration so i am to reduction so what is the diagnosis in conclusion yeah My first differential diagnosis will be a child with bronchial artery infection. Okay, bronchial artery infection. And uh, also possible bronchial pneumonia can be there with this kind of distress. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and uh, is it a purely respiratory dis disorder? Uh, no, because the child is having features of hypotonia that okay. part also might contribute to this distress, but it's just because. Probably having difficulty in breathing. Why, why is hypotonia more risky for a child regarding respiration? Because uh, their cough reflex, the protective reflexes. Protective cough reflexes are poor. And the chest expansion also. It's poor. Poor. With that, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, they can have my uh, micro respiration. Respiration, micro respiration uh, reflex. So respiration pneumonia is also common. Okay, right. So do you think this hypotonia? Is congenital or acquired? When you look at the child, it's probably congenital. Probably congenital. So what will you ask from the mother during the antenatal period? Antenatal history. I would like to know whether fetal movements were there. Okay. Normal fetal movements. Normal fetal movements. Having pre had experience of previous births mm -hmm. and polyhydramnios. Uh, polyhydramnios because swallowing is not effective. Not effective. Uh, with that, uh, whether there was prolonged labour. Prolonged labour. What part? What stage? Uh, the First stage, second stage, or the third stage? Uh, second stage, second right? Stage. Okay. We'll, we'll, that's the stage where the baby is coming down. In hypotonic babies will not be very active during that period, right? So, in antenatal history, you have to ask these questions uh, regarding a child with hypotonia, whether they have uh, fetal movements, uh, you know, active fetal movements during the uh, latter part of pregnancy. Uh, whether there was polyhydramnios because hypotonic babies with especially with myotonic muscle disorders uh, will not have a proper swallowing action uh, of, uh, therefore they will end up with polyhydramnios and during the second stage of labor because the child is hypotonic there is a high chance of getting obstructed labor or, or labor not progressing and ending up with the emergency cesarean section Right, we'll go to the next part. Uh, right, so those are the things. So, any diagnosis you might give, probable diagnosis for the underlying hypotonia. So, you are thinking it is congenital. Although there are no myopathic phases, probably it's a congenital myopathy. Okay, any other thing? Can it be a congenital neuropathy? Yeah, that, that's also possible. Uh, will you agree if I say it's a spinal muscular atrophy? Yeah, that also is a possibility. So it can be a muscle disorder, neuro disorder, or a neuromuscular uh, uh, junction problem as well. Right? Okay. Uh, do you think there will be any cerebral pathology involved in this child? What are the features which are a little bit against that? That means a central cause of hypotonia. Baby is not severely affected here. Was he responding inter well? Yes. Oh, yeah, he did not like to handling, he was crying. Okay, the answer I wanted at this point is, remember in hypotonia, in, in, a, in an infant with hypotonia, there are two major types of hypotonia. Central hypotonia, or we call it strong hypotonia. It is due to a central problem, or a problem in the brain. Or there is another entity called peripheral hypotonia or we call it weak hypotonia where the problem is either in the limb muscles or the nerves or the neuromuscular junction or the uh, anterior horn cells so neuropathies myopathies neuromuscular junction problems and anterior horn cell disease which are giving rise to hypotonia are called peripheral hypotonic disorders Central hypotonic disorders are conditions which affect the brain. Okay, some condition affecting the brain causing hypotonia. So it can be a hypotonic cerebral palsy, 
sometimes children with hydrocephalus or neuronal migration disorders or syndromes like down syndrome down syndrome hypotonia is due to a central problem okay so here the candidate should have answered saying okay this is unlikely to be a central hypotonia because there, there are no dysmorphic features in the child's face there are no syndromic features uh, there is no microcephaly or macrocephaly and the child is responding very well active and alert so if she, uh, so those are the answers she should have given to my question right so we come to the end of the presentation uh, we'll go back to our slides so after this uh, you should be able to answer these questions these are the discussion points from this short case what are the signs of respiratory distress in an infant as opposed to an older child uh, why is a hypotonic child more in risk of having respiratory tract infections what are the possible causes for hypotonia in infant and will it be easier to detect respiratory deterioration in a hypotonic child compared to a child with no neurological abnormality this the last one i have not discussed during the short case but you can think and uh, send me an answer through email okay thank you